Welcome to the Microsoft Partner Showcase. Search has long been a complex topic in data and analytics, and now in AI, in particular with LLMs and vector search. So we've teamed up with Elastic to bring a series of short episodes designed to walk through some of these concepts. In this first episode, Michael Heldebrandt, a distinguished solution architect, lays the foundation for how search works in Elastic. So let's dive in. Hey, hey everybody, I'm Brian Hitney, a solution architect at Microsoft, focused on data and analytics. Delighted to have the team from Elastic here to talk about Elastic. We have um, a number of things that we're doing going forward is we thought it'd be interesting to break this up into a few different episodes, uh, just to help contextualize everything and, and break it down. So for this first episode, we thought it would be great to just not dive too deeply into topics like vector search and LLMs, but start with the basics, right? In this case, about Elastic and uh, an introduction to search and how Elasticsearch works. So, uh, Michael, do you want to introduce yourself and what we're going to be covering? Sure. Well, uh, nice to meet you all virtually. I am Michael Heldebrand. I am a distinguished solution architect with Elastic, been with Elastic nearly eight years. Um, and this is kind of a level set that I've put together to help orient people to, you know, what is Elasticsearch and how does it work with data? And, you know, why can you use it for so many basically different use cases? And so, um, let me go ahead and jump into it. And so the first thing to note <clears throat> is, is that Elasticsearch is a document-oriented search engine now. Um, what that means is, is that if you're used to looking at data from, you know, database views where you've joined tables together and you get it in some sort of row and columnal format, you know, if you're used to a spreadsheet view, um, what that looks like to us in Elasticsearch is, is that's going to be represented as a JSON document. And every row of your spreadsheet is basically going to become a document inside of Elasticsearch. Every document gets an ID. Um, and then every column that you might be used to with data in it becomes a field and a value. And again, this is kind of a, a simple overview. We can have much more complexity in terms of objects, multiple values, you name it. But taking a one-to-one -one mapping of what a spreadsheet looks like basically looks like that on the right there. Now, further know that the reason that we can horizontally scale with elastic searches is that everything is routed to a shard based on its id so an index is where we put data and a shard is basically the unit of work that the cluster is able to uh, apply to it so um, shards are defined when you create an index it's one of the few things that you kind of have to choose in advance uh, further topics can cover how to change shards and things like that using other operations but just know that it's one of the important choices that you need to make um, each of the shards can basically be hosted by different nodes of the cluster. And so you're seeing here, you know, uh, two nodes that are working on each of these different shards. And so, you know, we can scale clusters from, you know, a single node that's running on a laptop all the way up to, you know, hundreds of nodes if we need to for the use case. Now, if you take something as simple as, you know, just a, you know, a card from a deck of cards, you know, the, the way to describe data um, can be many, many, many different ways. And you're going to see just even in this simple example, we've got a whole set of fields here based on just holding up what is this, you know, seven of diamonds, you know, it's it's got a name, it's got a face, because again, it's either a, you know, two through a ace, or, you know, it could be a K, a J. What is that meaning? Well, it's a string. Um, what suit did it come from? Or what suit is it? It's a suit of diamonds. You know, what's its face value? But that's, you know, numerically, you know, you could have a two and a, a jack is worth a 10 and things like that. The color of the card, you know, could be red. Um, the suit rank, if we're talking about bridge, could be, you know, it's the third uh, third suit in order in terms of tie breaking. You know, it could have multiple decks uh, if you're talking about playing blackjack in Vegas. Um, where they've got uh, five decks in the shoe, for example, you know, that uh, we have multiple decks that it could be coming from. Um, it may have a nickname and uh, you may have other things like, you know, URI references or all sorts of information. And again, inside of Elasticsearch, we've got ways to handle all types of different data, which is why you're going to find us in so many different use cases, whether it's uh, document search or whether it's time series use cases. Because again, um, whether you think about what logs or what metrics or what network data or what transaction data, you know, business KPIs, uh, fast moving documents, um, anything really is going to be represented out of different data types. And again, we can combine um, inside of Elasticsearch all these different types of data and allow you to basically search it and, and make sense of it at scale. 
So let's jump into, you know, again, what, what does it look like to search in Elasticsearch? Again, this is the very simplest search. And if you put in a, a whole deck of cards into Elasticsearch, which we'll get to in a bit, um, if you ask that index and you look for the sevens, you know, again, what you're going to find is by the default, uh, every field that you put in there is going to be made searchable. And we're going to search all those fields for you. So again, as a developer getting up and running with Elasticsearch, the defaults are here to make it easy for you to find those sevens. And if you actually put that query in, um, you will get each of the sevens back out. But do know that as a developer, there are some defaults in there. So if you ask for basically diamonds, um, you're only going to get 10 back. And if you're familiar with you know the deck of playing cards, you know that, well, wait, there's more than 10 diamonds in the deck. And again, you might get random ones back if you ask. Um, do know that you have to be aware that we have a default of 10 hits, as they're called. You know, We return 10 documents for your query by default, but you can ask for, you know, the size that you might want. Again, the the kind of cutoff point for the maximum, we'd, we'd recommend not going above about 10,000 hits. So that gives you an important idea of basically how many different documents you can, you know, throw back out of the system if you're looking for them. So um, generally, you know, hundreds of documents is not a problem for us to go find and, you know, put together and, and give you back in your APIs. Now, as I mentioned, sometimes you might want to be looking at, you know, tens of thousands of documents, or maybe your query actually covers millions of things. And so um, most human beings don't want to read all the different documents and then try and do the math and, and, you know, make sense of what's going on. And so what we also have is an analytics engine inside of Elasticsearch. And if you look in the documentation, this will be under what's known as the aggregation framework. And this allows you to effectively do things like make piles of documents. Just like if we had a deck of cards and you wanted to do a pile for face value, you know, you'd put the aces and then the twos, the threes, the fours, so on and so forth. Now, because we're working in a world where a physical deck of cards, you have to choose a spot for the aces. Um, inside of Elasticsearch, you can actually have multiple values at the same time. So an ace, if we're talking about blackjack, can be both one and 11 at the same time. And because it has two values, that ace can actually be in two piles at the exact same time. So again, be aware that you can have multiple values um, for something you've simple, even as a deck of cards. And again, you'll have 13 or 14 piles even though there's only you know 13 types of cards. So again, just be aware of that. Now, the histogram done by one is just one at a time. You can also bundle the cards together and do bigger histograms. So again, if you're thinking about things like, you know, time, you know, you might be looking at time by an hour, a day, a week, however you want to basically break it down by. And we're going to go ahead and combine those different documents into that pile. So again, if you're ever used to looking in Elasticsearch Discover, um, that timeline that you see, that's what it's effectively doing. is It's binning up things by time and telling you how many documents are in there. Now, there's all sorts of other things you can do. We've been talking about what's known as a, is a bucket aggregation, which again, puts the, the cards in a pile, so to speak. But Beyond just knowing that there are cards in a pile, you might want to know, you know, different types of information about what's in that pile. So again, there's this thing known as a metric aggregation, which again, you can ask for statistical information for numbers. Uh, there's lots of other things as well, but this is probably the easiest to kind of keep track of. And so if you ask for the minimum, the maximum, and the average, if you break it down by numeric value, not going to be very interesting, and it's what you would expect, but you see you can get two, two, and two for the twos, so on and so forth. But it gets more interesting if you want to do like, you know, break them into piles of red and black and now go get the average values and things like that. And depending on what you want the aces to be, it's either a 7.3 or a 6.5. If you blend them together, it's a 6.8. So again, know that there are things that you might need to decide as you're developing your use cases. Another thing to note is, is that some things don't have values. So what do you want to do with the jokers in this kind of situation? Again, as the developer, they're going to be ignored by default. But if you wanted to give the joker a value and say, I want to treat it as a king today, that's you know up to you. And you can put that into the API to basically have it do what you want it to do. Now, it wouldn't be very interesting if we could only search your data or only do analytics on all of your data. The real power of Elasticsearch is, is that we combine search and analytics. So the ability to have this massive mountain of data, the ability to look at just what you want to know about, and then be able to do large-scale analytics on it at speed and scale. So again, in our example, if you wanted to look for the sevens and then do a aggregation and put those four cards in a bucket together, again, a little bit of a simple thing to do with the deck of cards, but it becomes very powerful when you're thinking about millions of logs, for example, searching for a particular keyword. Now you've got a subset of all the logs and you might want to know the breakdown of what servers they came from, for example. Again, very easy for Elasticsearch to do. That's what we're designed to do. 
The last thing I want to cover is, is, is a very foundational thing to, to kind of get there early um, as you start thinking about, you know, how do I lay out data inside of the cluster? And one people's first uh, reflex is usually to think, okay, well, I have to put all the data in one index so I can search it. And the, the first thing I want to kind of share is, is that you don't have to do that. Um, inside of Elasticsearch, it is perfectly logical and reasonable to have multiple indices in the same search, as, as long as your search makes sense. So again, your data may be shaped differently, but if you have certain common elements, and again, we've got something called Elastic Common Schema to help with observability and security data, you can combine you know, logs and metrics and APM traces and security data because there are certain common fields like time. Um, there are certain common fields like the server that it came from or a username. And so even if you have differently shaped data, if you're asking for a time window and a certain server that emitted it, that's totally fine to look across different types of data, as long as your query makes sense across them. And the other thing to note is, is that in terms of the work the cluster has to do, it's, it's not about the indices, it's about the number of shards that the cluster is actually working with. So again, what that means is an index with you know six shards is really the same as three indices with two shards or six indices with one shard. Um, it's all about the shards. And so, Hopefully that's a good quick tour of, you know, what is Elasticsearch? What is it about? And, you know, just, just some very foundational things on how to lay out your indices. And again, as we do more of these, we'll, we'll get deeper and deeper into the nuances of search or how to use vector search. But hopefully this orients you to, to what's going on deep down there under the hood. That's great. I, yeah, I thought that was super helpful. Was I love the, uh, the metaphor and the, the example of the deck of cards, because that's something that uh, I can relate to, uh, particularly in, for all of us who went through statistics right in school, you, you start to learn those percentages really well. So, oh, uh, so that's, I, I, that's really cool. Yeah, thanks for reminding me. I actually forgot to jump into this. So again, uh, if you want to look at a deck of cards at Elasticsearch, here is the analytics in here. And so um, here, here's a fun bit of audience participation. So I like to do this. Uh, it's like, so, you know, why would you use Elasticsearch, you know, for speed and scale? Um, if you've ever picked up a deck of cards and wondered how many, you know, do I have all the cards in the deck? Um, you know, you have to count them all out by hand and it takes you a while. But if you're using Elasticsearch, I've, I've put a specific card in here and you can see how very quickly you can figure out that I have 53 cards now. I have 14 unique cards, so I, I still have one of everything. And I can see that I'm missing a seven of clubs, for example. And so um, knowing that you've got symmetry in a deck, you can use Elasticsearch to, again, to do speed search. Uh, you know, we've actually searched out what card is it. Um, if you edit it, you can see that it is the seven of clubs, you know, no, no mystery there. But um, this is an example of, you know, how search and analytics can work together, even with something as simple as the deck of cards. Thanks for it. Excellent. That's a quick introduction to search in Elastic. In future episodes in our series, we'll dive into vector search and data chunking. In the description, we'll include some links for further information. Thanks for watching.